Good morning, it's Theo and Lucas here. Uh, we are here today uh, to update you on our business and on the market. Markets are volatile and our business is moving forward. Uh, we have promised to up update you on a regular basis. You've seen that we uh, amended our earnings f uh, forecast today and that's why we would like to inform you properly uh, from this spot. So starting with the market, um, we have taken a long-term view, which you can see on this slide. And the long-term view really shows that market is still in line with what we have said a few years ago when we wrote a strategy. So what you clearly see here on the blue bars is that demand is driven by the emerging markets. So you see China, Asia, Middle East, and that drives demand. Russia, we have put on a stable level because of the, the current situation. And that demand uh, gap, if you like, with the blue bars needs to be filled with the green bars. And you see that Europe will take a very, very prominent role in supplying to the emerging markets as do we in New Zealand, but actually the number in 2025 for Europe is even bigger than uh, what uh, we expect out of New Zealand. Of course, the US plays a role, but less so. So the key supply markets is Europe and uh, New Zealand. But total view on the world is that there's a very strong outlook uh, for dairy, and that's driven by the emerging markets. So. That was 2025. If you look at wh where we are right now, then you see for the year that Europe and the US are basically in line with what we saw in the past, 1% up. Um, our last season was 2% up, so that's kind of at the lower end of our normal growth. Uh, but this year we can see that we are 5% uh, below last year, and I come back to that. And we have taken that as a forecast going forward for this year. Australia up, but on a relatively small um, uh, size of the pool. Um, the, blue, the blue boxes here are very important, so Russia under embargo. Asia, again, a very strong um, growth. Same for Middle East and, or Middle East and Africa, came of a strong growth, and now again plus one. China looks uh, a bit odd here because it's minus 15% for the year, but actually the last two, three months we're up by 20 to 25%. So China is back into the market. And you can see that in the next slide, so the China, the gap between supply and demand is really opening up. And you can see that the gap will increase to 23 billion. So what I think I said uh, a year ago, or 18 months ago, that the gap in China equal, will equal the New Zealand milk pool, that will actually happen. The good news for us right now on the right hand side of this slide is that inventories are really back to normal levels and have halved in, in, uh, in China. And that has happened between March and August. So that is strong, so demand is back, inventory levels are back on the levels where they should be. Going to New Zealand, uh, like I said, the month of October was 4% down, but year to date 5% down. Uh, that 5% in New Zealand, if you would take that for the whole year, that is 85 million kg milk solids. If you translate that into milk powder, it is 150,000 metric ton of milk powder. So people around the world were wondering why we were taking volume off GDT. Actually, what we are going to receive this year will be 150,000 metric ton whole milk powder, less than last year. So we have taken 146,000 tons of GDT. And you can see that we did that in the beginning of the season. That's the left bottom of this page. Um, so all speculations about the inventory, um, what we've taken off GDT is really what we will not get in terms of milk. So no inventory built. To the contrary, on, the, on this slide you see that actually right now we are same level as last year in terms of inventories, and Lucas will touch upon it uh, as well, but you see in the later part of the season, we will clearly go below last year because of that minus 5% forecast. So inventory levels as of here will decline because of uh, less milk in the New Zealand milk pool. Lucas will give you an update on the business performance. Thank you very much, Theo. Uh, on the back of a strong second half last year, we have continued uh, this year, very much in line with our expectation and hitting all our targets in terms of margins, OPEX, CAPEX and volumes. 
especially our gross margin has continued to be very strong and you can see that also in our ingredients business and our consumer and food service business both on the back of a very strong uh, second half of 2015. Ingredients very strong in the first quarter our uh, additional investment that has concluded last year has obviously delivered that increased optionality that we talked about and has almost eliminated totally our peak cost this year. You can also assume that in the first year we had a strong uh, stream return input as you can see from the right side of the chart here. But also our consumer food service continued with a, uh, on the back of a strong 2015, a second half. Uh, very much in line with our expectations, volumes and margins up over last year in all regions and doing very well in Q1 this year. Also financial strength is key to us as we said in the past. Yes, we seize the opportunity to invest in being made and create more optionality in our home base New Zealand. But clearly this year we have continued to reduce our capex to normal levels. Uh, you've seen that in the first quarter we are well below last year, well in line with our expectation of $900 million total capex for this year. Our advance rate is uh, in line to the normal guidelines we apply uh, year in, year out. And we can say today with the Q1 pass that we can clearly see our gearing ratio to come down to normal levels. Uh, especially over 2015 and we expect it to be in the range of 40 to 45 percent by the end of 2016 fiscal year. Theo? Yep, yeah, thanks Lucas. So really here um, what you saw in Lucas numbers on Q1 that again that we see a healthy volume growth in our consumer food service and you also see good value growth. So the strategy really really works. Uh, the second half of last year you saw it very clearly it continues in, in quarter one, um, so shifting a whole lot of milk to, to higher value. Of course, 2015 was a year, and 14 as well, a year of big investments in this strategy. And that's why that gearing ratio was on a higher level, but what Lucas explained before, uh, with our performance right now, gearing will also go back to the bracket where we want it to be, and that is 40 to 45 percent. Last time when we updated you, we, were, we spoke about being made. At that point in time, uh, the being made deal was very much still in process. Uh, in the meantime, we have closed the NMUM agreement uh, that has been approved also by, by the AGM of being made. Uh, same applies for our Darnham joint venture, so that has been approved by both board and AGM. Um, our, our Heer of Heen factory is up and running, so really that strategic partnership which lifts us together with being made to a real global partnership and a global company. Um, all building blocks are in place and that doesn't mean that it's all executed, so all teams around these different milk pools are in full execution to create uh, maximum value from this partnership. Then our ambition in, into China, um, I have I have contributed to a China summit uh, a week ago and you, you must have read something about it because the media was there and really this, this slide was uh, very much there as well where we say we have done very well in China. We have built a business from 1 billion to 5 billion in the last five year plan of China but the, a lot of things are changing in China. You see it on the left hand side, one to two child policy four to five hundred million more middle class based on urbanization. Aging population is a massive, not change, but development in China. Uh, the global connections, uh, that's not only for consumers, but also for uh, companies. And of course, the government has an adjusted plan. So what I said on that summit, when the wind of change are blowing, then you can do two things. You can build walls or windmills. We want to build windmills and that means that we aim for 10 billion business, 60% ingredients, 20% consumer and 20% food service, quite aggressive, uh, but that will really shift a whole lot of New Zealand milk volume as well to much higher value. We do that on the back of our three key brands, Anchor, and Lean and Mum. But what we focus on very much or what, uh, what is happening in China, that offline purchases are shifting to online purchases. So the offline to online strategy is, is crucial because in a, in a year or two from now, you will have more than 900 million people 
online and a lot of them buy online as well. So really this is the number one driver and of course our fresh milk, um, uh, what we produce in China in our farms, high quality, that, that attracts good partners and that's what is, has happened before with Abbott and with, uh, with BeingMate. Uh, but we continue to focus on strong partnerships. So China is still very much number one market and that is driving a lot of our strategy, but also a lot of our investment. Lucas. Theo, thank you very much. The uh, improved earnings forecast that we have announced today is as much a result of the uh, very strong Q1 performance uh, continuing with the uh, second half of 2015 as much as it is the acceleration of our business transformation. So we would like to take some time out to discuss with you and present to you the business transformation. Just as a reminder, we always said that uh, business transformation is as much about performance, driving performance weekly, cash uh, savings and cash savings across all areas of the company. But it is also about the mindset because both combination, both together, performance and mindset is what really makes a change to the total shareholder return. Mindset is about clarity of expectation, it is about the ownership and accountability, and it's about sharing our learnings. It is a big comprehensive program that spans around the globe across all areas of Fonterra. It takes 24 months from, from start to end, 14 work streams, 2,000 initiatives, 4,000 employees are engaged as of today across all geographies. And the important thing is, and it's not a program which will sit down in two or three months. We have a weekly cadence, a rigorous performance tracking of that program, which is ambitious, but is also delivering week after week. Just to give you an idea, those 14 work streams are sp uh, split across business leaders and functional leaders. That creates that double focus we want. And to give you an idea, you can see that we have generated savings by you know, streamlining our new product development process, uh, saving $5 million in the go by reducing by 12 months. Or we have optimized our transportation modes in New Zealand, saving another $5 million. Those are just two simple examples of the 2000 initiatives that we're working on, delivering cash savings across the group. This is a program that has started and to, uh, in August with the execution of initiatives. It is obviously a ramp up that you will see. In Q1 we have 200 initiatives that we worked on in the recurrent arena and we'll see this program ramp up to over 1,600 uh, initiatives by Q2 next year and they will eventually reach the 2,000 I mentioned before. So it is a progressive acceleration of the initiative that have been worked on and are executed. Most importantly as I said before, this is about cash, it's about cash savings and as you can see for the initiatives that have been executed by Q1, 200 initiatives, we will see a recurrent cash benefit in 2016 of 170 million dollars. The same will apply for the half year, we expect 600 initiatives to be executed and we'll expect a cash benefit in 2016 of $340 million to come true. The same thing will happen with a one time with $110 million by Q1 and $440 million by Q2. I will come back to you in half a year to update you on these figures. And again, I'll remind you these are cash savings across all areas, mm. working capital, capex, earnings, milk price, everywhere. Thiel, yeah, I'll leave you with the outlook. Yep, the outlook. So don't expect that the numbers of Lucas are going to all appear in EBIT. That's the message, right? Um, so outlook. Um, so strong performance in Q1 and also the outlook uh, is, is, is pretty strong. Um, that's why the quarter one results going into the latest estimate uh, for the year. Yeah, we have reviewed, we've discussed with the board and that's why we have recommended to, uh, sh to change the earnings per share bracket to 45 to 55 cents. It's early days in the season, but if you would take that earnings per share bracket and you would apply the dividend policy and you would ask us to recommend now to the board what the dividend was going to be, then it would be 35 to 40 cents. Uh, but again, it's early in the season. We have not recommended this to the board yet. 
uh, that will be recommended at a later stage uh, this year, so it's subject for board approval. Um, second part is really um, the loan. Uh, we were committed to pay 18 cents by Christmas, and we are going to have a board meeting in December where we will recommend for the second half of the season what we're going to do. So uh, the commitment um, for the first half still stands, but we can fast track payment to farmers because we have brought the one-off benefits Lucas was talking about, we brought them forward and we can move seven cents up. So that means by Christmas we don't pay 18 cents of the support uh, package to farmers, but uh, 25 cents. And we will discuss with the board in December what we recommend for the second half uh, of the season. But as you have seen, milk prices, eh, we, the milk price went up. Uh, that's when we, uh, we uh, gave the forecast of 460. We're still very much there at 460, and 460 still requires support to our farmers. So that's what we're giving. Um, of course, we have to look at markets, what is going to happen. Uh, like I said in the market, demand looks a bit stronger than before. Uh, supply has certain effects around the world, um, so we have to kind of wait and see what the milk price does. We're still at 460. Uh, we will wait for the next uh, GDT events, and then early December when we have uh, DRI requirement, we will update uh, the milk price to the market. I thank you for listening, and I hope this was sufficient information for now. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.